Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this special Thursday evening service here at Sanctuary. This is Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday, uh, a wonderful Thursday we will, where we will celebrate the Lord's Supper together, communion, this wonderful idea of communion. So we welcome you tonight, or I welcome you because I'm doing this all by myself tonight. <laughs> I'm leading and uh, presiding over this special worship service, and we had promised that this would be a family service, and so that it shall be, and we are going to begin that way tonight with a special story, and uh, I had chosen this story because ultimately um, this week we were supposed to be producing A Tale of Three Trees, uh, City on a Hill Arts, a special dance interpretation of the classic folktale. And uh, unfortunately, we were not able to do that because of the season that we're in right now. But I didn't think that we should forego the telling of the story. And so tonight, for the kids, I'm going to be reading the story to them. So we'll begin the service with a special time for just the kids. But if you would just join with me in prayer as we begin this service tonight. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, O oh Lord, for this opportunity to gather with your people tonight, God. And I know that we might not be sitting in the same room, but God, I do trust that you are gathering us together as one body tonight. God, be with us. And God, we ask that your Holy Spirit minister through this time together in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So let us begin. Hey, kids, why don't you go ahead and scooch in close? That's what Miss Corrine says, right? Come on, scooch. Come in close because this is just for you. And uh, I'm going to read this precious story to you. This is one of my favorite stories of all time, and I hope that you'll enjoy it too. It's a wonderful story. Um, it, it is so appropriate right now, this special week of the year, as we're coming so close to Easter, uh, this wonderful celebration that we'll have on Sunday. Um, but let's read it together, shall we? So it is called The Tale of the Three Trees. I'm going to put my special magic glasses on so I can read this to you tonight. And hey, adults, this is for you too. This, uh, this tale, mm, it touches the heart if you'll allow it to. So this is the tale of three trees. Now this was retold by Angela Ellwell Hunt. And these illustrations are by Tim Yonke. Uh, this particular book is dated March 31st, 2017. I had given it to my daughter Cameron <laughs> as a choreographer for the tale of three trees. And it begins like this. Once upon a mountaintop, Three little trees stood and dreamed of what they wanted to become when they grew up. All right, there you go. See the three trees at the very top of the hill. The first little tree looked up at the stars twinkling like diamonds above him. I want to hold treasure, he said. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones. I will be the most beautiful treasure chest in the whole world. There he is dreaming. <laughs> well, the second little tree looked out at the small stream trickling by on its way to the ocean. I want to be a strong sailing ship, he said. I want to travel mighty waters and carry powerful kings. I will be the strongest ship in the world. The third little tree looked down into the valley below where busy men and busy women worked in a busy town. I don't want to leave this mountain top at all, she said. I want to grow so tall that when people look up at me, they will raise their eyes to heaven and think of God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. Those are some good dreams, huh? If you were a tree, what do you think you would dream? So that's their little dreams. Uh-oh. Well, years passed. The rains came. The sun shone. And the little trees grew tall. One day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. And what do you think they're going to do? The first woodcutter looked at the first tree 
and said, This tree is beautiful. It is perfect for me. With a swoop of his axe, the first tree fell. Now I shall be made into a beautiful chest, thought the first tree. I shall hold wonderful treasure. Well, the second woodcutter looked at the second tree and said, This tree is strong. It is perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining axe, the second tree fell. Now I shall sail mighty waters, thought the second tree. I shall be a strong ship fit for kings. And the third tree felt her heart sink when the last woodcutter looked her way. Oh, she stood straight, straight and tall and pointed bravely to heaven. But the woodcutter never even looked up. Any kind of tree will do for me, he said. And with a swoop of his shining axe, the third tree fell. Oh, there you go. Oh, the third tree must be so disappointed. The first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought him to a carpenter shop, but the busy carpenter was not thinking about treasure chests. Instead, his work-worn hands fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold or filled with treasure. He was coated with sawdust and filled for feed for hungry animals. Is that what you think of when you think of a treasure chest? Does it look like that? A second tree smiled when the woodcutter took him to a shipyard, but no mighty sailing ships were being made that day. Instead, the once strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat. Too small and too weak to sail an ocean or even a river, he was taken to a little lake. Every day, he brought in loads of dead, smelly fish. Oh, it's not what he wanted at all, is it? Let's see what happens to the third tree. The third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams and left her in the lumber yard. What happened? The once tall tree wondered. All I ever wanted to do was stay on the mountaintop and point to God. Get That's not what she wanted. Many, many days and nights passed. The three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in a feed box. I wish I could make a cradle for him, her husband whispered. Well, the mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight shone on the smooth and sturdy wood. This manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly the first tree knew he was holding the greatest treasure One evening, a tired traveler and his friends crowded into an old fishing boat. The traveler fell asleep as the second tree quietly sailed out onto the lake. Soon a thundering and thrashing storm arose. The little tree shuddered. He knew he did not have the strength to carry so many passengers safely through the wind and the rain. The tired man awakened. He stood up, stretched out his hand, and said, peace. The storm stopped as quickly as it had begun, and suddenly the second tree knew he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. So one Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beams were yanked from the forgotten woodpile. She flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly 
and harsh and cruel. Do you see the third tree there? But on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the first tree beautiful. It had made the second tree strong. And every time people thought of the third tree, they would think of God. That was better than being the tallest tree in the world. Isn't that a beautiful story? Well, we're going to move on to reading tonight's scripture and sharing some time in devotion and uh, sharing communion together. So as I transition to the table in my home here, <laughs> Uh, please grab your Bibles if you can and turn to Matthew 26 and I'll meet you in just a moment at the table. So welcome. I am at my dining room table and we're going to celebrate um, communion together or the Last Supper because on Monday, Thursday, this is when we recognize Jesus' final meal with his disciples, his time in prayer at Gethsemane in preparation for what's going to happen in the next 24 hours. And so tonight we're going to read a couple of scriptures, the first one being Matthew 26. Uh, and this is uh, the first time that it's recorded that Jesus is sharing this meal with his disciples in preparation. And it begins this... Uh, this way in Matthew 26. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus. Now, this is the first day of unleavened bread, the first day of the Passover. And so that's what we'll be celebrating. And um, this is what Jesus is celebrating with his, his disciples. And so we are right in the midst of that right now, uh, coming right out of Passover, the full moon. If you've been listening to Ginger's teaching at all, but we are uh, right there on the heels of the Passover. And so as Jesus was celebrating, uh, the disciples came to him and said, where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my, uh, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. You just take a moment and think about that. Because we are being invited to the table with Jesus every time that we share communion, every time we share the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper. And so just keep that in mind, that as Jesus is reclining at the table with those that were near and dear to him, in the same way we are invited to be at table with him, he presides at this table as we remember him this way. And as they were eating, it says, he said, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? That's a deep question. Sometimes we need to search our hearts and wonder if we are truly faithful. I'm sure Judas thought he was being faithful. But what, you know, God knows the hearts of men. If we search deep within to know exactly how faithful we've been. Is it I, Lord? They all asked. And he answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had never been born. 
Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? And he said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after uh, blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And so now we're going to jump forward to our words of institution that we share almost every time we share communion and they come from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So if you want to turn there with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and now Paul is sharing his experience with what Jesus had taught him. I'm just jumping down now and it says, but in the following instructions, I do not commend you because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. So Paul's doing a little instruction, but we're going to keep forward. If we jump down when he begins, for I receive from the Lord. Now we know that Paul did not, uh, was not a follower of Jesus in the time when Jesus' earthly ministry was, but he received these instructions as divine revelation. So I receive from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, as we just read in Matthew, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so tonight, that's exactly what we're going to do. If you have your communion elements, some of us might have some of these um, communion cups, the disposable ones. If you have something at home, you are welcome to uh, gather that as we share this together. Does it really matter what they shared around the table happened to be bread and wine? Uh, but we're going to use these elements as symbolic elements tonight. And so if you can just take this, the body of Christ, his body broken for you, his willingness to go to the cross for you, to take the punishment of our sins upon himself, this body of Christ broken for us. And as Jesus tells us, do this in remembrance of me. So would you take and eat? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And then he goes in the same way. Also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And then Paul goes on to add these words, For as often as you eat this bread... And drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And this is confirmation what Jesus had said in our chapter on Matthew 26 when he said, I will not drink this again until I do it in my kingdom. And so we do this in anticipation of this great and wonderful feast. And so if you would take your cup and prepare, let me peel it back. He says, the cup of the new covenant, this new covenant sealed in the blood of Christ, signed in his blood, this new covenant, this new agreement between God and us. We are covered in the blood of Christ. How beautiful it is to celebrate the Last Supper together and know that this cup, his blood was poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And so as we drink it, all of us, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Would you join me in drinking? Thank 
you, Lord. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, O oh Lord, for feeding us through this precious, precious meal. And God, I pray, Lord, that this is a meal that engages us, strengthens us for the journey ahead. Lord, we don't know what's to come in the days and weeks and months ahead even. But God, we know that you have gone before us already. And that, Lord, we don't have to fear for anything. But through this meal, God, you have given us the elements to encourage us, to strengthen us, and to know that we don't have to fear. Because even as Paul says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so God, no matter what may come, we trust in you, we have faith, we have hope, and we have joy. And we thank you for feeding us through this meal. In Jesus' name, amen. I have one final thing to share with you tonight before we close. This comes from the Iona community in Scotland. And I wanted to read a final reflection before we closed our time today. This is called Sit Here While I Pray. Sit here while I pray. The sorrow in my heart is so great, it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep watch with me. Father, I have shown your glory on earth. I have finished the work you gave me. I have given my disciples your message in the world. It hated them. Yet I don't pray that they may be taken out of the world. I pray that they may be kept from evil. Sleeping, Peter? Can you not even keep awake for an hour? Father, I pray not only for my friends, but for all who believe their words. I pray that they may be one, just as you and I are one. Father, the world does not know you, but I know you and they know you, so that the world may believe that you sent me. May they be one. May they be one. Peter, keep watch and pray. Don't be drawn by temptation. The spirit is willing, but oh, the flesh, the flesh is weak. Father, if it is possible, Father, if it is possible, take away this cup of suffering from me. Take away this cup of suffering from me. But let it not be what I want. Let it be what you want. Are you still sleeping? Are you still taking your ease? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to sinful people. Get up. Let us go. Look, here comes the one who will betray me. So I pray that your time tonight was meaningful as you remember Christ's sacrifice as we move into the next day, Good Friday. So remember on the Friday to take some time to recognize Christ's sacrifice for you. And, uh, and then hold that, treasure that in your heart so that when we come to Sunday, we can truly rejoice in what Christ has done for us. So again, I thank you for joining me tonight. I pray that you sleep well, that God's peace rest upon you, and that you truly feel the blessings of God's perfect peace and presence with you tonight and every night. May the Lord, the God that has gone before, be with you tonight and always. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Good night, everybody.